Good morning and welcome to church. Would you stand this morning? As we begin this morning, today is uh, the weekend we celebrate Memorial Day. And uh, just uh, so grateful, so grateful for the freedom that we have. It's, it's the freedom that we have that we get to come in here today and that we get to worship and we get to sing and we get to, to speak the word of God without persecution because of those who have went before us, because of those who have given their lives, those who have sacrificed uh, everything for the freedom that we, we get to live in. So we just wanted to start this morning off by remembering them, that we would never forget the sacrifices that men and women have paid throughout the years and throughout the century. So let's just pray, and then we're going to start this morning, and we're going to worship. Lord, thank you today, Lord, for men and women who gave their lives, Lord, for the freedom that we get to live in, for the ultimate sacrifice that they paid, Lord Jesus, so that today we can walk in here and enjoy being in your presence together as the body of Christ, Lord. And I thank you for the families that have also lost loved ones, and Lord, they've sacrificed their loved ones, Lord, for our freedom. I pray a comfort for them. I pray a peace for them, Lord, and we just give you the glory. For Lord, not only have they sacrificed, but you sacrificed. You gave your life for our spiritual freedom. And so we thank you for that today. And today we want to honor you as well as those have, who have fallen and who have given their lives for us. And we just give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Would you join us this morning, Stan, as we just begin to worship this morning? We're looking forward to a great day. Welcome to church. There is a river where goodness flows. There is a fountain that drowns sorrows. There is an ocean deeper than fear that satisfies and cries. There is a current stirring deep inside. It's overflowing from the heart of God. The blood of heaven crashing over us. The tide is rising. Spring up a well, spring up a well in me. Nothing 
Rockstar on the drums, yes. Would you hug someone, greet someone, and then and then take a seat, and I'll, I'll share with you some some quick announcements. Oh my gosh, you guys are just a, a huggy bunch this morning. So good to be in the house of the Lord. So I'm Shelly Traub, for those of you who don't know who I am. And I just want to welcome you. If you're a visitor today, just welcome. Welcome to our house. Welcome to the house of the Lord. Let's take a look at this quick video, and I'll be back with some announcements. Welcome to One Church. Our church is all about people becoming disciples of Jesus. What does that look like? We connect. We grow and we make a difference. A special welcome to all guests. Whether it's your first time, second time, or maybe you haven't been here in a while, we are so glad you're here. In the seat back pocket in front of you, you'll find a card labeled, So You're New Here. This will provide a few details to make your visit the best it can be. Also in the seat back pocket, you'll find the Connect card. If you're here for the first time, fill that out and let us know you're here. Bring it to the hub in the back, and we got some special info and a gift for you there. If you're here for the second time, we would love to know you're back. Fill out your Connect card. Bring it to the hub. We've got a special gift for you as well. A $10 gift card of your choice. Whether you're a guest or a regular, the Connect card is a way to sign up for things. Information about the church, ministry or events, as well as opportunities to volunteer and serve. You can also request prayer or let us know of a decision that you're making today to follow Jesus. After filling out the Connect card, you can place it in the offering or drop it by the hub on your way out. We are so glad you're here. So lots of things going on at One Church. Um, I think I introduced myself. I'm Shelly Traub. I'm married to this very cool guy down here, Pastor Tracy. If, if you're visiting, stop by the hub. Pick up this very cool mug. We have some for you back there. And um, if you haven't joined us yet at our home for a Connect Lunch and you'd like to know more about One Church, about Pastor Tracy and I, what's going on here um, at this location, we just would love to have you. So we are having a Connect Lunch today and another one in about four weeks. If you'd like to join us, sign up on the Connect card, and we'll get in touch with you, and we'll have you over. It'll be a fun time. Okay, um, where can you find information about what's going on at One Church? In your handy-dandy, very cool, colorful bulletin, and also on our Facebook page. So check in. If you haven't checked in this morning, go ahead and check in, and we'll keep you posted through the week of things that are coming up. A couple highlights um, of things that you want to make sure you have on your calendar. Let's see, on Friday night, June 30th, ladies, this is our night of worship. It's our women's night of worship right here at this location from 6 to 8. We're going to have a light dinner and just a time of celebrating the Lord. So um, put that on your calendar. There will be more information coming up. Uh, and we are having Kathy McPhail come in as our guest speaker. And many of you may have already heard her at a, at a retreat or at a, at a conference or something. 
something. Anyway, she will be here with us, and it will be a great night. So make sure that's on your calendar. Let's see. Also, tomorrow for Memorial Day, the young adults are going to be meeting at the Modesto campus at 8 a.m. and piling into a bunch of cars and heading out to Santa Cruz for the day. Right? So if you don't have plans and you're a young adult under 30, is that the age? Like under 30, over 18, under 30, and you want to just go and hang out down in Santa Cruz, you can connect with Grady. He has more information. Um, he's one of the leaders, so he'll be happy to make sure you all have a great time tomorrow. Um, summer is full of camps. So many things going on. Kids camp. Today is the last day, parents, to turn in your paperwork for your kids and your money for camp, for early registration. So if you're like, what, I didn't know there was an awesome kids camp coming up, you can still send your child, come talk to me afterwards. It, you just won't get the early registration um, price break. But they're, they're going to be up at Old Oak Ranch. So that's coming up. Also, youth, One Church Youth Camp is coming up on July 30th. So parents, this is going to be an amazing event um, for your, your, your youth age, so sixth grade and up um, students. And we'll have more information about that. But mark your calendars, July 30th. I think the cost is $135, and you can get rid of your teenagers for three whole days. That's like 40 bucks a day. It's totally worth it. Okay? Okay. Um, also coming up, starting in for the month of June, uh, I'm going to be teaching a foundations class. So for every Tuesday in June, we're going to meet and we're going to have a two-hour class and it's all about Jesus. That's what the class is going to be about, all about Jesus. And basically, this is a like an intro to Christianity, Christianity 101 in, in my in my, in my day job, I'm a professor, so I think like 101, okay? Um, so it's a foundations class about what does it mean to be saved and, and what does it mean to be like a new creation in Christ and what, you know, who am I, this made new thing? What does this all mean? So if you've recently accepted the Lord or maybe you've never had a foundations class and you just want to make sure your basics are are there and you, you understand your foundations in the Lord, come join me Tuesday nights from 6 to 8. You can bring your dinners. Uh, we'll be hosting that on at our house. Sign up on the connection card, and I will give you a call, and we will have fun for the month of June. And now I'm going to turn it over back to a video on the Holy Land. Okay, everybody has to go to the Holy Land at least one time in their life. And if you've been before, you know how easy it is to want to go again. So much to see. It's incredible where Jesus walked, the land of the Bible. Anyway, you're probably like, okay, that seems like a big deal, a big trip. Um, worried about the finances, worried about all kinds of other things, all these details. Okay, just come on June the 5th to our informational meeting and let us talk to you about it. You can get all those answers. You can consider it. And if it's this next year or in a year to come, um, it'll be worth it. Okay, so June the 5th, uh, Bethel Campus Atrium at 6 p.m. Join us there. Hope to see you there and hope to see you with us in the Holy Land at some point in the future. There is an unparalleled mystery to the Holy Land. A land where ancient cultures collide. Right now, we are actually on top of a camp. I've never dawned on me that the context of the environment adds a whole different level of understanding. I, I can't even begin to adequately articulate the spiritual impact that this trip has had. Right. So, hey, we want to invite you. We are trying, we're trying to work out how we can go to the Holy Land. Um, so we want to invite you to be a part of that and come join us. If you're just considering it, 
go to the information meeting so you can get a little more information about it. Uh, but it's going to be incredible. Along with the Holy Land, the end of the trip, we're going to Greece to see where Paul walked and where Paul uh, went on some of his missionary journey. Um, so that's going to be exciting. So please come be a part of that. Check it out. Um, we'd love for you to go with us, and we'd love to have a large group going from our campus. It'd be fun. Um, the more people that go, the funner. You just have more fun. You just enjoy it. You get to see so much and be a part of so much. So um, last thing I want to tell you about is this coming Saturday, um, I've been asked to speak at a men's breakfast for Redeemer Church, downtown Modesto. Um, and they're going to have about 80 guys to 90 guys there. And um, they asked uh, if I wanted to bring some of our guys. And so they've given me one or two tables that we can go and be a part. We're going to have like these incredible breakfast burritos and just going to have a great time there. Um, so if you are interested in going with me on that, I have room for probably about eight guys, eight more guys. So you need to sign up on a connect card or uh, let me know, send me a text or send me an email. Seven o'clock Saturday morning. Um, down at Redeemer Church. So uh, it'll be a great time. I'd love for some of our guys to go there and, and see what's happening there at Redeemer, a great church. Um, I've been going down there, uh, got a couple friends there, and just having some Bible studies with them and hearing what they're doing. So uh, I believe in the body of Christ, and we're part of the body of Christ. So if that's you, come and join us. Check it out. Um, we'll have a great time. I'm going to invite the ushers to come at this time. And uh, again, just want to say thank you this morning for your faithfulness. God has been so good uh, through your giving, and we are, are a blessed church. And um, we, we are able to do things in our community, on our campuses, and throughout the world because of your faithfulness. And we say this a lot. You don't give to one church. You give through one church. And just a little bit, I'm going to share a little bit more about what we talked about with uh, Kingdom Builders and Project Rescue last week. And uh, that's, that's the heart of what we're doing, is we're seeing the kingdom of God go further and around the world in new and incredible ways. So I want to invite you to, to join with us in that. Lord, thank you today for your faithfulness. You are so good to us. Lord, I thank you for your, your church family, this body of Christ that faithfully supports the ministries that are taking place here. Lord, and I just pray that you would bless those who are obedient unto your word in their giving and their faithfulness to you. Pour out blessings upon their careers, their jobs, their businesses, their homes, Lord, that you are our source and you are our provider. And so, Lord, we thank you for it today. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Well, we have a, a kind of a busy day today. We got a lot that we're doing. Um, and as you're... Uh, uh, receiving, we're receiving the tithe and offering. I want to tell you that today we get to celebrate some new partners with One Church. We have several people that have joined uh, the One Church partnership, which means they've went through our, our Connect Lunch and our Grow and our Make a Difference. Um, but before we introduce them, we want you to check out this short video that talks a little bit about what partnership means here at One Church. Hello everyone, today we're recognizing new partners here at One Church. Each Christian is called to partner with God and with the local church to make disciples. Partnership, which some churches refer to as membership, is an official step to join a local church family. The Bible teaches that a Christian should commit to one church family to connect, grow, and make a difference. Specifically, a partner chooses to make a difference in three key areas, in biblical stewardship, in sharing their faith, and in ministry. Today, we recognize some incredible people who've made that decision. They've completed the steps process, attending the Connect Lunch, Grow Night, and Make a Difference dessert. You guys are awesome. Marcy and I are so thankful that God has brought you to our church family. We, along with each campus pastor, we're here to serve you as we serve alongside of you. We get to impact the world together, from neighborhoods to nations. We're so excited to partner with you for the cause of Christ. All right, so across our network this morning, across our churches around Modesto and Ripon, we have several members, our partners, that are joining us. And so we want to recognize them today, and we want to pray over them this morning. And so if, you, if I call your name, we're just going to ask you to stand where you're at, um, and we're going to pray over you. I know we have several that are out of town, but we have a few that are here. Um, for us here, we have Chris and Kelsey Hayes that are joining us as partners. I didn't see him this morning. Um, Carrie Stevens, 
uh, Susan Frederick, Destiny Aragon, she's back here. She's hiding back here. Um, William and Alyssa Ziegler and David and Robin Jones. And so these are our new partners that are with us, along with you can see all the partners across our, our church um, in the different locations. So it's just incredible to see what God's doing. So this morning, we're so grateful for you being partners with us. And I'm going to ask you, would you guys stand with us? And if you're around one of those, would you put your hand on them and pray over them this morning? Um, because we are the body of Christ, and we need to join together. That's what being a partner means, is we're joining together to, to encourage one another, to strengthen one another, and to see the kingdom of God go further than we could ever see on our own. So let's, let's just pray as we unite today. Lord, thank you today for these who have uh, went through the uh, steps that we go through. But Lord, not just that they went through steps, but they have a heart to partner with us in the body of Christ for the kingdom of God. Well, Lord, we thank you for their faithfulness and their stewardship. Lord, for, for the ministry and how they help and serve and volunteer on a regular basis. Lord, and for their testimony. And Lord, we just pray that you would bless them, Lord. And as a body of Christ, that we would come together to encourage and strengthen one another. That Lord, this is, the body of Christ is the greatest tool that we have, Lord, to walk this walk with you. Lord, that we have each other. Lord, and we serve each other. So, Lord, I pray a blessing over each and every one of them. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Well, remain standing with us, and uh, we want to just continue our service in some worship. Um, how many appreciate our worship team? They just, I mean, they're here. They're here by 7.15 in the morning getting ready. They're here on Thursday nights practicing, uh, getting ready. Um, and throughout the week, they're practicing on their own. So I'm just grateful for your commitment. And I'm so glad that Destiny finally decided to join the church, too. That's just great. But uh, we were, I'm just teasing. Um, we are blessed. I say this. I've been around and been at other churches. We are blessed with one of the best worship teams around. And why? Not because their talent, but because their heart and the anointing in their life and their desire to follow Jesus. So would you join with us as we worship this morning and just give God the glory.
your voice sing that to him come and consume god all we are we give you permission our hearts are yours we want you we want you come and consume god come and consume god all we are we give you permission our hearts are yours we want you we want you Are you grateful this morning that when Jesus walks into the room, or more personal, when he walks into your life, everything changes. Darkness starts to tremble. Fear has to run. Shame has to go. When he walks into the room, the hopelessness that may surround you ceases to exist. Why? Because he is the hope. He is the hope. He's the one that can change a situation. He is the one that can change a life. That's the Jesus that we're talking about. That's the Jesus we're worshiping this morning. Lord, thank you today. Lord, we just give you thanks. The Lord, for mo many of us, you have walked into our lives and everything has changed. You have transformed us by the power of your blood and the grace of and the mercy that comes with that in our lives. And so, Lord, this morning we say thank you. 
Thank you that darkness has to tremble and flee. Thank you that hopelessness no longer exists because our hope is in you. Lord, and we just give you the praise and we give you the glory. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. You can be seated this morning. Thank you for worshiping with you with us. And we're gonna, we're gonna worship here a little bit uh, in just a little bit, but I wanted to give you uh, kind of an update on our Kingdom Builders and Project Rescue that we brought to you last week. Um, and if you missed last week's service, um, because of the nature of the service and what we're talking about with Project Rescue, we can't put it on our public Facebook page um, because it would risk some lives of people that are in the ministry. So what we have done is we have set it up on our private Facebook page. And here's how you get to that. You go on to our public Facebook page, and there should be a link there that you can request a friendship into our private page. And then we're going to post a video there so you can hear what we shared and all the details that we shared about last week with Project Rescue. And I'll let you know that we're, we're going to be very careful who we accept as friends on that page because there's a lot of people out there that are looking and watching for things. And so we, we will be very careful that we only accept those that are our part of our one church. Um, so and if you think we don't know that you're part of us, let us know. Um, come talk to us, and we'll make sure we accept you so you can go see that. But we just really want to be careful to protect uh, the ministry that's going on through Project Rescue around the world in eight different countries. But uh, this morning, just want to give you uh, a quick update. Um, if you weren't here last week, um, we had asked everybody that uh, maybe you signed up for Kingdom Builders or Better Together back in November, which is the same thing. We just changed the name. We rebranded it. Um, we're asking you to recommit um, and let us know because we now have this cool uh, Kingdom Builders wall um, that represents everybody that's partnered with us. And I think right now we're up to about 37 uh, pe families and people that have partnered with us. So today, in a moment, we're going to give you an opportunity in your, uh, the seat in front of you, you should find a card like this um, that says Kingdom Builders, or if you're in the front row, you may have to reach around, tell somebody to hand you one so you can check it out. And it tells you all about what Kingdom Builders is. And what that, just short version is, it's a group of us that are partnering together financially to see the kingdom of God go throughout the world. And so it supports our missionaries monthly, um, along with all of our projects. And this year, we're committing $20,000 to Project Rescue. And uh, we're excited to be able to partner with them um, in the ministry that they're, they're having there. A lot of a lot of uh, churches like to give and partner with like third world countries and India and stuff where the American dollar goes a long way and can reach a lot of people and like, you know, $10 can feed, you know, 20 kids or whatever. Well, in Europe, the dollar doesn't go as far. So Project Rescue in Europe is having a hard time getting the funds needed to continue uh, what they're doing. And so we are kind of at the foundation. They, they're very young there in Europe. Um, only five years old. And so we're at the, the beginning of that to partner with them. And we're going to give this project money to them, and then we're going to continue to support them on a monthly basis so that we can continue to hear the stories of what's going on in Project Rescue. So if you're not familiar, Project Rescue is a ministry that is uh, designed to rescue women and children out of sex trafficking. And um, so we went and spent uh, a week with them in, in Europe, and got to hear and got to see some see some things, got to experience um, walking down in some areas, in some industrial areas where there's these little campfires where girls are standing there, usually half naked or naked. I mean, it was it was very uh, shocking at times to see how it was how things were there. But we got to be a part of that, and we shared about it last week. So you can hear more about that if you check out our our deal. Um, our webpage, our Facebook page. But today, last week, we showed you a story of a young lady who came through Project Rescue. Her name is Beauty. And today, uh, I'm so excited because we get to share with you an update on her story. So check out this video, and I'll be right back. Many of you have already been an important part of things that have been happening uh, here in, in Madrid. And I know that you all know the testimony of Beauty and all that she's been through. And, and so here I have Beauty 
Spanish, uh, you got a certificate for that, for yeah. reading, writing, all the grammar. And then you went on to do nursing, and you also actually got really high marks for all you did with the geriatric nursing, with practical parts. And not only that, but Beauty came in with severe problems in her health, and now you can see she's looking wonderful, and you're feeling a lot better as well, right, Beauty? And not only that, but Beauty also, after all these things, you know, there was many challenges. One was to get your legal papers. But God answered our prayers as well. And today you have your residency, your work permit. Uh, it's really amazing what God has been doing. Now you also found it work. And you're looking after an elderly person. And uh, what else, Beauty? Something. Also, you, you, you have a surprise. <laughs> Yes, I really have a surprise. First of all, I want to thank you all for your prayer, for your support, for being there for me. I love you so, so, so much. I love you all. And the surprise that I have for you guys is that I'm getting married soon. <laughs> I'm getting married by June, July, I mean August 29th. So I really, really appreciate all the people who have done for me. Thank you so much. Thank you. I love you all. And your fiancé is also Christian, he's serving the Lord. Yeah, my fiancé is an assistant pastor in his church. And another thing is that your family in Nigeria all came to oh, God. Oh, God, yeah. That is another miracle. It's another miracle thing that God has done in my family. I have to pray for that many years ago. Oh, By the time God is already gone to pass, I have a good testimony to, to testify to the world. I feel like going out there and shout to the word that God is so good. <laughs> also, God not only did all these things for you, Beauty, but um, Beauty actually went right to our program Project Rescue. She now has her own place. Mm -hmm. And you are really now a big blessing to all the other girls and women who come Sorry, in. You Her desire, your desire is to help others to be free and yeah. to, to have complete restoration yeah. and healing. Um, I know that all the dreams you have, it's going to be great so far. <laughs> God's helped it come true. So apart from having the beauty here, um, also just to let you all know some advances that we've been having in Project Rescue Spain. Um, here we're sitting in our new offices and we're actually still preparing them, but um, you know we have a much bigger space so that we'll be able to um, have a lot more activities and have a place as a workshop. Uh, a reception for people to come in, a place for interviewing, so many things, it's a real blessing. And also, soon we'll be moving, we already have the new premises, the new house, uh, the new beginnings home, where uh, we should be able to have at least 10 women in this home, and it's just a much better environment for them as well. So, so thank you all, um, and God bless you. Bye! Bye. <laughs> So that is what we're a part of. We sang that song, when Jesus shows up, hopelessness ceases. And um, th that is evidence right there. Because beauty was in a situation that seemed hopeless. And Jesus showed up, and he made a difference. Not only that, we shared last week, we got word from the director of Project Rescue that one of the girls that we talked to down in the industrial area um, by one of the campfires is now in the home. And, and, and going through Project Rescue and getting out of the, the situation she was in. So that's what we're a part of. And we're inviting you to join with us in that and, and being a part of Kingdom Builders and making a difference in the world. So if you uh, weren't here last week and you weren't able to join with us, we're going to sing a song here in just a minute and give you an opportunity to fill out this portion of the card. You're going to fill that out. You're going to drop it in the box here. Um, the rest you get to keep as just a reminder of what God's doing. And then take one of the little tags here and you put your name on it and you tack it on the wall. Why are we doing that? Because we want to see and we want just a, a representation of what God's doing and, and all those that are partnering with us to see the kingdom of God go further. And one of those is Project Rescue. So if you weren't here last week and you didn't get one of these books, we have these. These are free. Um, this is a book called Beyond the Soiled Curtain um, by David and Beth Grant. 
and they are the founders of Project Rescue. So that's free, one for every family that, that is a part of us today. Um, also, we just have some information about Project Rescue that you can read about. Um, that's just a great resource to kind of let you know what they're doing and what they're about um, and what God's doing around the world. And then if you join with us as a kingdom builder, um, we brought back jewelry that the girls make to raise money while they're in the home. And we have that on the back table. So each family, if you join us as a kingdom builder, you can uh, pick up a piece of jewelry that the ladies made, um, handmade there in the home, um, which is just a good reminder of what, what God is doing in their lives and in your lives. So would you stand with us this morning? And if you want to are joining us this morning during this song, you're not going to interrupt anybody. You just come up here. You can put your card in, fill out the little note. Stick it on the wall and, and join us as we partner together, as we commit together to see God's kingdom go further in this world. You know, we can do a lot more together than we can do by ourselves. And we can see a lot more lives change. So as we begin to sing, you can just move out this morning into that. Let's worship him this morning. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare your our living hope, your presence. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves, when my heart becomes free. And my shame is undone, yes, Lord, your Yeah. 
and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Father, we thank you for the presence of your Spirit, Lord, in our lives, in our worship, Lord, and uh, today we are just grateful for the freedom that we have to declare that. The freedom that we have to worship you and to give you glory. Lord, let us never take it for, for granted, that which you have purchased for us. Lord, we give you the glory and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. You can be seated this morning. What a great morning so far. We've had a lot involved in our service we have a lot more to go. Um, so um, excited this morning. Uh, we are going to introduce something to you this morning that we feel is the, the next step in uh, what we are as a church and uh, who we are as a church. And so today I want to introduce to you our new uh, youth, our One Church Riverbank Youth Director. He has just come on staff with us. Would you welcome Grady Nakano? Now, this is Shelly and I's nephew. Uh, he lived with us for a few years, and uh, we're excited about what God's doing in his life. We believe in youth, that youth ministries is the next big step that we must take as a church to continue to reach our community, continue to touch our community. And so we're investing and we're taking action steps to launch and develop and grow youth in our church. And so uh, we believe in this next generation and Grady is a big part of that. So this morning, I just wanted to bring him up, introduce you to them, introduce you to him and have him share about his life and give a, a brief testimony about his journey with God. I was saved when I was eight years old in my aunt's bathroom. The holy place. <laughs> All right, let me tell you something about that. That's the holy place. So if you ever need to pray, I'm letting you know, go to the bathroom. It's really quiet and peaceful in there, okay? <laughs> so it's the best place to be at. Um, even though I was saved at eight, I, I didn't have a full relationship with Jesus. I knew who he was in my head, but I didn't truly say it in my heart. Like, oh, like, Jesus, I love you, things like that. Um, it was like that for a really long time. Until I was about 16 um, is when I really started to have a full relationship with Jesus and wanted to commit my life truly to Jesus from just knowing it in my head and knowing it in my heart. Um, at that time, that I was still battling with addiction and battling with choices that I was making that I knew that were wrong, but I didn't want to give up the lifestyle that I was living. Um, I go to college after that, and I was actually pursuing a Christian leadership degree. Um, but I was still doing the same things that I was doing in high school, and I thought it was going to work, and I um, thought that my way was the best way, and I found out that it wasn't, and I found myself um, in a really big pit. Uh, I just kept digging myself deeper and deeper and deeper, and it kind of felt like the prodigal son when he was in the pig pen, begging for scraps. Um, I, I got to that point, and I decided to come home. So I've been back for three years now. I uh, did an internship through our, through our network. Um, and man, it's been awesome. God's redeemed me. Uh, I like truly believe that I do have a relationship with him, fully hearted. Um, I wouldn't mm -hmm. do anything to change, to change that. And so um, that's where I'm at now. I went through a journey of refinement, went through a season of refinement, three years actually of refinement. <laughs> it stinks, um, but it's definitely worth it. You know, yeah. and um, without that, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. And without the church yeah. and without my aunt and my uncle, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be standing here. So very awesome. appreciative. It's awesome. He shares. Yeah, he was uh, definitely in the, in the pig pen. And uh, there was a, a few times he, he would call us and like cry and go, and I want out, but no, I don't want out. Uh, and uh, so it was kind of a journey with Grady. And I had only known Grady for brief moments when he had come home from college and then just for, through phone conversations, getting to know Grady. And um, I can remember the final call, and it was like, Auntie and Uncle, I have to get out of here. I have to come home. And uh, 
So we said, well, great. We're going to put you, we'll let you get on some buses and some trains and uh, make your two-day journey back. It was, long, it was a long two days. Long two days. I'll tell you. <laughs> um, we were just kind of hoping some of the stink from the pig pen would wear off by the time we got home, you know. Uh, so a little bit of refinement there. But uh, I can remember the day I drove downtown to the bus station, and Grady arrived, and I picked him up, and basically you had a backpack. That was it. Yeah. And, backpack in um, a small suitcase. A little bit. Everything else over there. And uh, the, the young man that I'm standing next to today is not the young man that got off that bus. The young man that got off that bus uh, had been beat up, pretty defeated. And today I stand next to a young man who has victory and who has been transformed. And uh, I just enjoy my relationship with Grady. And I'm excited that I get to partner with him in ministry and what God's gonna do. So talk about your your call, your passion to ministry. Um. Yeah, my passion is for, for youth students, young students, probably from the age of 10 to 19, even my age. Um, I just, I, I genuinely love people with my heart. At the same time as genuinely loving people with my heart, I want to still bring hope, the hope that people gave me when I was a student. It's not to replace anybody in their lives, but to be a positive role model in their lives. Show them what a life can look like with Jesus through, through hard times and through good times, right? Because we all mm-hmm. go through that kind of stuff. And so to be able to show hope in a different kind of way in a culture that needs it today um, is truly what I'm here for, and it's, it's my heart to um, shed light on that and to bridge the gap for that. That's awesome. Give us some vision uh, and the plan kind of for launching youth ministry here at our, our, our campus. So for here at Cross, uh, Crossroads or One Church River Bank, um, I'm excited to be able to do summer hangouts. We're going to be doing summer hangs soon, and uh, that's going to be really awesome. Go to a pool, have a barbecue, um, just hang out and meet with um, students, build relationships. This is about cultivating and building relationships before you start anything. Um, On top of that, just meeting with parents and uh, building relationships with parents because I want there to be a bond between me and the parent. Um, It's not about me taking that role, but it's about me partnering with you. Mm -hmm. Um, That's that's huge for me, is that I want to partner with the parent. And I want to come alongside you to build your son or your daughter up in Christ and Mm -hmm. to be that role model that he also needs or she needs as well. So we're going to, on top of that, we're going to actually be meeting back here, 9 a.m. service. Um, if you come to the 9 a.m. service sometimes, I'm sorry if it's really loud. We might be yeah, playing sure. games or something. <laughs> uh, no walls will break, I promise. <laughs> and if they did, I don't know how to fix them. <laughs> <laughs> so let's, let's just be honest. I don't. I don't. <laughs> yeah. uh, but we're going to be doing that. It's going to be really, really awesome. It's just going to be a time of discipleship. Um, a really big thing on my heart here is to uh, be able to raise a generation and to raise students who can firmly believe in Jesus and, and stand on that, stand firmly on that ground, to not, to not waver in their faith, to not waver and say, okay, I'm going to go with the world, world, but no, you know what, even though the world's saying this, I'm going to be over here and I'm going to be strong in the identity that Jesus has called me to and what Christ has called me to do. So that's, a, that's, that's awesome. what we're going to be doing. Well, we have, uh, we have probably about 12 to 15 kids that are going to be in this age group here in the next month. Yeah. Um, many of them are going to go to kids camp. That's going to be their last hurrah there. And then they got to move into uh, our youth ministry. So they're going to be meeting at nine o'clock starting in July back here. And then they'll join us for second service. So I want to encourage you to welcome them. They're a part of us. They're not, yeah. you know, it's not a side thing. They're here to worship with us. So that's going to be exciting. And then our goal is in the fall to launch a Sunday night, kind of a small group activity game night just to start building our youth group and our ministry um, to the point that they become like self-sustaining, that we develop worship teams and uh, stuff out of our youth ministry. So that's kind of our heart and our goal as we go forward um, with this. Um, Also, if you have youth, get them to the summer camp. It's $135. If you can't afford it, uh, come talk to me because Dave McKay will pay for it. Um, So (laughs) Thanks, Dave. Everyone go to Dave for scholarships, please. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, we're just excited. No pressure, Dave. None at all. No, no. But uh, no, we we want our kids. This is going to be a great launch into what's going to happen in the fall. Yeah. They're going to really get to experience some great things. And so, I'm just really excited about this. I'm so grateful for Grady's heart and where we're going. In just a little bit, we're going to pray over our our youth and our generations to come. But would you give it up for Grady Nakano, our youth director? 
um, we are a church where all generations can experience the presence of God. That is our belief. That's one of our core values. And uh, what, does, what does that mean? What it means is this, that each generation matters to God. And a church that has every generation is blessed. And I love it. We are a, a multi-generational church. I think we have traditionalists. Uh, we have uh, baby boomers. We have uh, Gen Xs. We have a Generation Y and millennials. Are they the same? My wife knows all this stuff. I just, she teaches them. Wise are the millennials. That's because we didn't know why they were here, so we called them millennials. I don't know. Um, Gen Y. Why did we have this generation? No, no, we have it. Uh, uh, so we have this mix of generations going on, um, and I love that. I love that about our church. Um, what does also this mean? It means everyone experiences the presence of God in different ways. Every generation has their style, has their flavor, all right? I mean, how many of you are Lawrence Welk people, right? There, I knew my dad and mom, that, you know, the bubbles and all that, yeah. Uh, all right, so, you know, uh, how many are, oh, that's this, this is a funny one. How many are Donnie and Marie? Go on. Christine, get your hand up. You had purple everywhere. I'm a little bit country. I'm a little bit rock and roll. All right. Um, yeah, yeah. So we all have our flavors, all right? Some of you are, are you know, you're the Beatles group, right? Um, you, you know, you're a bunch of beatniks. Um, you know, uh, we all have it. Some of us are just like, you know, the old ACDC uh, Def Leppard group. So um, it, it's just there's multiple generations, but be, we all have our styles, and we all have different ways of experiencing the presence of God that it is really unique. So what the kids are doing over there experiencing the presence of God is really different than what we're doing here. We're not playing the games and nobody's getting pies in the face, but that might work. It might be fun. Um, but they experience different. The next generation of youth are gonna experience the presence of God different. But what doesn't change is the presence of God. What doesn't change is the power that comes with the presence of God. And so uh, we, we are really excited about what's gonna happen. I mean, have you ever thought about the fact that the only time in your life that you're pleased about getting older is when you're a kid, right? When you're a kid. Um, you know, less than 12, you're so excited about aging that you start thinking of it in fractions. You know, somebody asks you, how, I'm, I'm eight and a half. You know, it's like, okay, all right. Um, but uh, as you, you, begin, you get older, you're not so excited. I mean, you become 21, right? Uh, and then something kind of starts happening at that point. You turn 30. You are pushing 40. You've reached 50. You made it to 60. You hit 70. Oh, you're in your 80s. <laughs> and then something happens. It kind of reverses. You get to the 90s. And you start thinking fractions again. I'm 91 and a quarter. And I'm hoping to get to the half. You know, uh, I'm 92 and three months and four days and 16 hours. You know, all right. Uh, so, you know, but here's the thing. It's no matter how old you are, how young you are, God loves you. And he has a purpose for you each and every day. Even if you're 93, six months, two days, and 16 hours, he has a purpose for you. And we want to be a church that, that grows and develops in that and, and sees that happening, that all generations can experience the presence of God. And then today I want to talk about we must be a church that influences and invests in the next generation. We need to be a church that's willing to influence and invest the next generation. You see, it's easy to look at the generation that comes behind you and be pessimistic in your view because they're not like you. They don't do things like you, right? They, they, they don't take care of things the way you took care of things. Um, and, and, you know, especially the, this, the millennial generation has really gotten a bad name. You know, and I, and I admit, I, I'm, I'm part of that. I raised the millennial generation. And so part of it is my fault. 
Um, and, you know, I used to work at Home Depot, and I'd have these millennials that worked for me that I was like, I wanted to fire every one of them. You know, we couldn't say this, but I always, when I interviewed people, I was looking for people for, that were over 40, you know, because they, they just were better, you know. And, but the problem is, we, we give them a bad rap, but the problem is they've been raised that way. They've been raised by helicopter parents, helicopter parents that hover over them and take care of everything. You wipe their nose and they're 18 years old. They can do that on their own right? We, we provide everything for them. Oh, you don't got to go get a job be, because you need to focus on this. I mean, come on. Some of us were working jobs by the time we were 15, 16 years old. We still went to high school. We still got good grades. We still played sports. We did all that, but all of a sudden, we got a generation that, oh, that's too much, all right? We did that. Parents, we, we developed that. We have not taught them. And so we can easily get down on the next generation because they don't do it the way we did it. They don't handle things the way we did it. But here's the thing. We can never give up on the next generation because once we give up, that generation's lost. And it's, it doesn't take but a couple generations for culture to totally change. We've seen that in our world. It doesn't take but a couple generations to go from a society who is based on God and the principles of God to a society that has God, is godless, that, that has no principles, that the culture dictates what's going on. So this morning, it is so important. Let's not give up on the next generation. Let's be a church that influences and invests in the next generation. Psalms chapter 78, it's in your notes, so you can turn in your Bible is our text this morning, and it says this, oh, my people, listen to my instruction. Open your ears to what I'm saying, for I will speak to you in a parable. I will teach you hidden lessons from our past, stories we have heard and known, stories of our ans- how, how our ans- that our ancestors handed down to us. We will not hide these truths from our children, but we will tell the next generation about the glorious deeds of the Lord, about his power and his mighty wonders. For he issued his laws to Jacob. He gave his instructions to Israel. He commanded our ancestors to teach them to their children so the next generation might know them, even the children not yet born. And they will, in turn, teach their own children. So I love this part. So each generation should set its hope anew on God not forgetting his glorious miracles and obeying his commands. So what that really means to us is that the next generation, they can't live off of our hope. They can't live off of our faith. They have to set a new hope. They have to have a new revelation of who God is in their lives. And that's going to change everything. Now, does that mean they forget about what's happening? No, they don't forget about God's glorious miracles. We don't let them forget about his commands or his truth. But we got to realize that the next generation needs a new outpouring of God. They need a new outpouring. You know, every major revival that has taken place in our world, almost every major revival has started with the young people, has started with the younger generation. And so we are praying for the next generation. We are going to invest and influence the next generation. Why? Why should we do that? Because we need to ensure that the next generation will experience the presence and the power of the real hope that only comes through a relationship in Jesus Christ. You see, I don't have children's ministry to entertain your kids. I don't have youth ministry to entertain your kids. I, we, number one, we don't have the finances to out entertain Nickelodeon, uh, MTV, uh, all the amusement parks and you know, we just can't. So we're not going to out entertain the world. But we do have a desire to raise them up in the real hope, to help them understand the, the difference and the, the, the power of Jesus in their life and that relationship. And we have a responsibility. We have been commanded to pass it on, to make it a priority to pour out into the next generation so that they will put their trust in the Lord, not forgetting what God has done, that they will keep his commands, they will keep his truth, all right? We are a church that also believes in the Bible and preaching the word of God, and we want our kids to understand the word of God. 
We want our kids to be able to open up the Bible and know where to turn and know where to go and know how to read the Word of God. Um, now, again, we are also a church that believes community, communicating a timeless message in a today way, all right? So the way we communicate it with our youth is gonna be different than the way we communicate it here um, because they receive things different. We're just gonna text every message to them. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Well, they're not, they're gonna come in here, they won't even talk during church. It's just mass text going to the youth. Uh, no, but again, they receive things differently. So the message the, me the method changes, but the message doesn't. The truth of God's word is the truth of God's word from 3,000 years ago to today and 3,000 years beyond us. The truth is the truth. The word of God is the word of God, and we will teach that, and we will train up our young people in that so that they do not become like their forefathers, stubborn and rebellious. Man, I pray. My dad, often, he, he, he'll say this every once in a while when my kids are acting up, and he goes, say, payback. I pray, I pray for my kids that they don't make the same mistakes that I made, that they don't become stubborn and rebellious like I was. And, and I pray that they would never know a day without that close relationship and that powerful walk with God, that their hearts would be loyal to him and their spirits would be faithful. So what do we do, what do we need to do to influence and invest in the next generation? We need to take action. We need to commit to sharing our faith journey with the next generation. Be, take, take the time to share your faith journey with them. You go, oh, they don't wanna hear about me. They don't wanna. If you take the time to invest in them and get to know them and you start sharing your story, it's, it's a powerful tool that God has given us. So share your faith journey with them. Commit to teach them the truths of, of the kingdom of God. All right, again, we're gonna teach the Bible. We're gonna teach them truth. I love what I hear out of our children's ministry and what I'm hearing from my grandkids and about what they're learning about God and the presence of God and worshiping God. And it's powerful. We're not just telling them cute little stories and sending them home with candy, but they're learning about God. And we're gonna do that with our young people too. Our young people are gonna come out of our youth ministry heading into their young adult years on fire, founded in the word of God and the truth of God and ready to take on what God has for them and the purpose he has. We wanna commit to support the journey of the hope of the next generation. We may not understand it, but we need to support it. You may not understand, you, you know, how many of your parents didn't understand your music, right? They're like, oh man, that's such devil music. I mean, right? They, you were going to hell because of the music you were listening to. You may, we may not understand everything, but we're gonna support them in their journey, all right? That doesn't mean we're gonna go crazy wild. We're not gonna conform to the culture. We're gonna be transformed by the power of God in our lives and we're gonna influence the culture. But again, we may not understand it, but we still need to support it. And then we need to commit to invest in the ministry. We have committed as a church, we've committed finances to, to bring Grady on a, a, as a part-time youth leader, but also we're gonna invest money. I, I'm serious, if your kid wants to go to camp and you can't afford it, I will beg, borrow, and plead to get your kids. I will take it out of my finances to make sure. Why? Because I believe in the next generation. I don't always like them, but I believe in them. I believe in them. So how can we help influence and invest in the next generation? Some practical things here. Pray. Pray specifically for the next generation. I've asked Grady to put a list of the kids that we have and we're gonna get that list out because I want you to take that list and I want you to pray for them by name. I want you to get familiar with our kids and, and lift them up because, hey, they're facing things in this culture that you never faced in your, they're facing things in school that you never faced in school. None of us had to worry about whether a girl was coming into the guy's locker room to change with us, right? None of us had to, had to, you know, we didn't have to put up, we didn't have to deal with some of the pressures that they're facing and some of the culture things that are being shoved at them. And so we need to pray. They, hey, if they make a decision for Christ, they have signed up for a fight. As soon as you choose Jesus, you have set yourself in opposition to the enemy of your soul. And he's gonna come after you. He's gonna attack you. All right, I stood on the beaches of Normandy 
in the beaches of Normandy by, from the water to where they could find some covering is about three to 400 yards, about four football fields. And these young men got off of these ships and crawled through this sand in the wide open, getting blown to pieces by the enemy because they had no covering, but they kept moving forward. They kept moving forward. Hey, we need to pray a covering over our youth because they are out there. They're in that stretch of sand between the, where they've come in from and where they need to get to. And the enemy's throwing bombs at them. He's trying to take them out. And so we got to pray a covering over them that God would protect them. We need to build relationships with the next generation. We need to, when they're in here, when they start coming to worship, we need to befriend them. We need to get to know them. You go, man, I don't have anything in common with a snot-nosed junior hire. It's all right. You were once a snot-nosed junior hire, so you have co- something in common with them. Oh, man, I, they, they've got such attitudes. Well, guess what? So do you. So do I. We got attitudes. Don't act like you don't have an attitude. Some of you are getting it right now. No, I'm just kidding. Um, right? We need to build relationships with them. Invest in it. Um, volunteer to help out in the ministries. Hey, Grady's going to need help, and, it, and he's going to need people to come alongside of him. If you maybe you're you're a family or you're a parent, and you got some resources, you got uh, a great swimming pool in the backyard where they can do some activities, or you got like ping pong tables, and you got all the the fun games. Uh, get involved. Come talk to Grady. Say, hey, man, I, I got this. Uh, I got a boat. I'd love to take kids up to the lake and drown. I mean. Uh, take them water skiing or on inner tubes. Um, we don't want to drown any of them. Um, but we love that. We want to do things, and you can be a part of that. So, so, so volunteer to help out and then support the ministries of the next generation. Um, be faithful in your giving. If Acts chapter 2 says this. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait till our sons and daughters begin to prophesy. They begin to work, and the pouring of the Spirit comes upon them, and God begins to transform them. I can't wait till our our young men begin to see visions of what God can do in their lives and in our church. Um, And this is the body of Christ. This is the body of Christ. Spirit of God, pour out on us. Pour out on our sons and daughters in a fresh way. Again, as we are here on Memorial Day weekend, uh, I couldn't help but think of my trip to Normandy um, and the time I spent there at Omaha Beach. You know, what is said about that generation is that they are the greatest generation the United States has ever known. They are the greatest generation. Why? Because they were committed. They were uh, they, they didn't even probably understand the totality of what they were committing to. But they, these young men and young women said, I will go. I'm going to go fight for our freedoms. I'm going to go protect others' freedoms. I'm going to go even if it means sacrificing my life. To the point that some of them would lie about their age. At 16 years old, they were landing on the beach of Normandy. My daughters are 15. I can't imagine my son, 17, can't imagine what it must have been like for those young boys, for some of them to be dropped as paratroopers behind enemy lines. There was a commitment. There was, there was, it was such a commitment that those that got rejected because of health issues became suicidal because they wanted to go fight. And we live in a, in a, in a country today that I am sorry that when people walk out of the graduation because the vice president that they don't agree with and they don't like and they go and pout and walk out, they should be sent to the line. I, I'm, just, I'm just tired of the spoiled the, the generation that, that is out there and some of the things. They don't understand the sacrifice. I don't agree with everything every politician says, but I agree that I live in a free country. I live in the most amazing country. And if you don't know that, we can take you to some countries that aren't. But this is the greatest generation ever known. 
It was a powerful day to be there at Normandy. You could show the pictures. There's a monument here that's uh, just above the, the, where the grave sites start um, honoring them. And then the next picture is the thousands and thousands of crosses. This is only one area of the cemetery there at Omaha Beach. And I came across several crosses that said, here lies a hero only known to God. So they didn't know who it was. This next picture shows you a map of the beaches and the landing that happened on, on D-Day. And then this next picture, I'm standing on the beach with the water at my back, looking at a memorial with some of the flags of all the nations that landed there on that beach. And then the last picture, I'm standing by a wall where Dwight D. Eisenhower has a quote there. The eyes of the world are upon you. I have full confidence in your courage, devotion to duty, and skill in battle. I tell you what, I want to raise up a generation like this generation. If they're willing to lay it all down. They're willing to give their lives for, for the kingdom of God, for the cause of Christ, for their faith that they believe and hold so strong that when the culture comes against them, when the, 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 the temptations come at them, they stand firm. They keep moving forward. They keep moving up the beach. Thousands of young men gave their lives that day for a cause they could not fully grasp. I hope that we can raise up a generation that is willing to give their life for a cause that they can fully understand and fully grasp, the cause of Jesus Christ, the hope of a generation. Would you stand with me this morning? I'll invite the worship team to come back as we wrap up this morning. This morning, uh, we wanna recognize as we are talking about generations and talking about the faithfulness of God, we have some students that have graduated uh, eighth grade this year that we're gonna recognize and that we wanna honor this morning. And so um, I want you to honor them with us. Now, um, we have three. One's not here, he had surgery this week. So um, I'm gonna invite his dad to come stand for him. So uh, we have Jude Crick. <laughs> Jude, this is Jude coming down. This is the, the supersized version. This is the, this is the McDonald's supersized version of Jude. Uh, <laughs> But this is Jude Crick. He graduated eighth grade from uh, Knights Ferry School. So uh, you get to stand here and you get to hold his Bible. Now I'm gonna ask him about this Starbucks card to make sure he gets it. Uh, so uh, this is Jared and I'm gonna invite his mom to come join us because we're gonna pray over him too. Allie, come join us. Um, great, great family in our church. But Jude, just be praying for him. He had surgery on his thumb. He broke it playing baseball and um, he had to have some pins and stuff put in. And just be praying that he gets complete healing of his hand. Um, lots of issues can go on there. So we're praying uh, no infections that God continues to heal him and strengthen him. So Jude graduated. And that's Jude right there. This kid is probably one of the most charismatic kids I've ever met. Um, he was at a football game, a section playoff game. And he took over the television mic from the cameraman. And so he did an interview for him. But uh, also, um, I'm honored this morning because my daughters have graduated. So I'm gonna invite Madison Traub, who graduated from Oakdale Junior High, to come and join me. And Morgan Traub graduated from eighth grade at Oakdale Junior High. So, uh, yeah, so she did, they did their selfies for their pictures, but I'm so grateful. Uh, I'm so grateful for you. Um, so grateful for the next generation and the investment that we're gonna have in them. And so I wanna do this. I'm gonna invite Grady and I'm gonna invite my dad to come up and you guys just stand up here in front of us. And I'm gonna ask, we got multiple generations. So I'm gonna ask Grady if he'll pray over uh, these young people that are graduating. And then I'm asking dad to pray over this next generation and our, our youth and our ministry that's happening here. And would you just join us this morning as we pray for these young people. I'm so excited what God's gonna do. So let's bow our heads. Jesus, thank you for this day, God. We just lift up the uh, the younger generation to you today, God. Lord, we praise you, God. To um, you soften you, hearts, Lord, God. Pray, Lord, to have their hearts soften, God. 
to be able to speak words of wisdom, not just to their friends, but to other people, God. To be able to have a peace on their lives that's only attained by the Holy Spirit that you give them, God. God, I pray for that kind of peace in their lives, an unexplainable peace and an unexplainable joy as they go on with life and as they go on into high school, God. God, I pray, God, it says in Malachi chapter 4, God, that uh, parents turn their hearts to children, children turn their hearts to parents, God. And so today, God, I pray, God, for every single student in high school and in junior high, God, that they're able to turn their hearts, soften their hearts to their parents, God, to be able to make a generation that's going to outlast and outlive everyone around in your name. How true it is that each generation has a responsibility to meet its generation and influence the next generation. Next month in July, I'll be 78. Uh, I'm not through yet, but that's, I had a generation. My wife's parents were ministers before me, and then now my son's a minister, and now uh, Grady is, is going to be, and he calls me Papa, and then coming up is Morgan, who's worshiping the Lord, and then a worship team. See, every generation has a responsibility to the next generation. So, Father, I pray. Lord, that we, whatever generation we are, will influence, godly influence. Lord, I'm always amazed that at my age, this, you keep calling people to missions and keep calling them to ministry. And Lord, every generation, I wonder who's going to be a leader, and then all of a sudden you call them up. You always have somebody. You always have a Joshua ready to take Moses' place. You always have somebody that says yes to God. And I pray for these generations. I pray for these young people, and they're going to camp. More of them are called into the ministry at camps and convention than at any other time. So I ask you to speak to their hearts. I'm so thankful for this young generation that has a tenderness towards you and a boldness to share your gospel. Such boldness I haven't seen in many generations. And Lord, I thank you for their willingness to make a stand for the right things. And Lord, I pray, pray that your protection would be upon them. Do not let the enemy succeed or peer pressure succeed, Lord. But, Lord, let the, the word of God rise up in their spirit, Lord, and give them strength and protection. I thank you for what you're doing. I, I'm thankful for this church that is now investing uh, more than just words into the youth as well as the children. Uh, Lord, they are not the church of tomorrow. They're the church of now. And we just praise you for it. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen. You can be seated. Thank you. Not you guys. You stay standing. I'm just letting them go. Stand up. We're about out of here. We won't keep you any longer. Some of you are getting hungry or hangry. So... So we just want to say we love you guys very much. And if you have any needs, any questions, put them down on the Connect card. If you'd like to join us for Connect Lunch soon, we'd love to have you. Don't forget about the uh, foundations coming up a week from Tuesday. And just be blessed in Jesus' name. It's a great time to be in the kingdom of God. We love you. Amen. <laughs>